let's say that we want to shift the color. We'll use hue and saturation. And it brings up a toolbox that allows me to change the color. And you'll notice how the color is adjusting here. Okay, I can turn the saturation down, so on and so forth. I can even colorize it with a single color if I wanted to. So we have a lot of options, just like you normally would with hue and saturation in this case. Okay, but the thing that's cool about that is that if you look over here in the layers palette, when I turn that off, the original photograph is still there. Now, you might also notice something else that whenever you add an adjustment layer, by default, it also creates a layer mask. Okay, now, why is that important? Because I'll show you, if I come over here again with a brush and I start painting on this layer mask, say where the heart is right here, watch what happens. Notice how the image is restored to what it originally was. That's because with the adjustment layers, we have the ability to mask out their effects on the previous layer, and they only affect whatever's underneath them. Okay? They only affect what's underneath them directly. So you notice that the type isn't being affected at all. It's only the layer that is directly underneath. And if there's multiple layers directly underneath, then, then all of them will be affected that way. So like for instance, let me just finish this section. So for instance, if I moved this layer from where it is now and moved it up one notch, notice how it's now affecting the yellow. If I move it up yet another notch, it's going to affect everything underneath it. So that includes the type, that includes this layer box and so on, and also the background image. If I move it back down, those other ones aren't affected at all and now it's only affecting just the background. It's another way of adding non-destructive editing meaning that you're not affecting the original image at all but still using it to control specific areas. Another cool way that you can use masking apart from just using the adjustment layers and all the adjustment layers work how you imagine that they would. I'd encourage you to experiment with them. But I'll show you a cool feature, a cool way that you can use uh, masking with type. Okay, you can actually use it with type. Let's turn off all of our type here. And actually, let's turn off that adjustment layer. And I'm going to create two new words. We're just going to say love and have that on its own layer. So I'm going to click the move tool and move it up here. And then I'm just going to type in never. And then we'll move it up here. Now, let's change the fonts. We'll go back to satisfaction again. I don't know if that one will work for what I want to do. Probably not. So let's try the great vibes font that we were using before. And I'm going to make this really big. Let's really big it more. <laughs> okay, so we have love and then never. We'll make it 240 as well. And we'll make it great vibes. Okay, now right now the type is black. And you'll notice that position wise, let's say that I wanted to have these lined up on the right. And you'll notice how I, the way I have a position, the N is going up into the loop of the L. Okay, and let's just for the sake of making things fun, let's change the color of love to a green so that there's some definition behind the two. Okay, and actually let's change never to maybe this copper brown. So now you can definitely see a difference between the two colors. And let me zoom in here a little bit. I want to show you. Just by using some simple layer masking tricks, you can make the type appear like it's wrapping around the other word. And I'll show you the easiest way to do it. 
So what we want to do, we have the choice of either affecting the never or affecting the love. And quite frankly, we can get the same result from both. So what we're going to do is with never selected, I'm going to add a layer mask. So I'm just going to click to add a layer mask. And then I'm going to hold the control key down or the command key if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to click to make sure that the word love is selected. Okay. And I want to make sure that the mask for never is also selected. Okay. I'm going to choose a brush and it doesn't need to be this big. We're actually going to make it a hard brush, make it smaller. And all that I'm going to do is paint where this overlap is on the top. Okay. And just to make it easier for you to see, I'm going to choose uh, control H to hide the selection. Now watch what happens whenever I paint onto the mask. The brown disappears just in that area, right? But look at the result. Just a simple step like that. It looks now like the green is going over top of the N and then underneath it. Okay, so just a simple masking trick like that and now all of a sudden you have a separate cool effect. And of course you can apply other things to the type like drop shadows and those kinds of things just like you can with any other layer option. Like if I right mouse click and we choose blending options, you'll, it brings up our layer styles. And so I could choose a drop shadow. And we can increase the size here a little bit, move them away, probably want to drop down to maybe 50%. Click OK. Now with these layer styles or blending options as you call them, one of the things that you can do is actually copy them if you want to use the exact same one for more than one layer. The easiest way to do that is to right mouse click where it says effects, choose copy layer style, and it, it actually tells you which ones are in use. Drop shadow come down to or go up to where it says never right mouse click again and choose paste layer style and whenever we do it adds the drop shadow the exact same whatever we applied to love is now applied to the word never so that's another really cool feature about working with layers now let's say let's just zoom back out here let's say that we're done that that this particular design is what we were after and we're all good and uh, we're ready to upload it to the internet but the problem is we have all of these layers uh, so the first thing we want to do is save it as a Photoshop document uh, just hit file save as and make sure that Photoshop is chosen as the document. It'll have a PSD extension to it. And then we can just hit save and that'll maintain all the layers. Okay. Now, if I click on this box over here, one of my options is flatten image. And what that does is it takes all the different layers that exist in your document and flattens it all down into one layer, just the background. If you have any that you aren't using, It'll ask you if you want to discard the hidden layers, which normally you would. So you click OK. And you notice now all that's left is just background. And everything is compressed down in just one layer, which I can then choose File, Save As, and maybe we want to save it as a JPEG. I'll just type in Love, hit Save. The quality 8 is usually good enough. And we'll go with that, and it's done. Now, the alternative Another option that you have when you're working with multiple layers is let's say that you have multiple parts of the image that you're wanting to work on, but you have no further changes that you want to make with the area that you're working on right now. So you can actually merge layers together. And so to do that, you select what layers you want to merge together. Like say we want to merge those, uh, right mouse click, choose merge layers and it takes all the layers that you selected and combines them into one. So now, if I were to move this, you know, all those layers are just on one layer and you'll notice that the mask is gone now too. So um, the mask was applied, the drop shadows were applied, all the extra add-ons that I had for the individual layers were all applied 
and everything was merged into one layer. Okay, so you want to be very careful whenever you use merge layers because you can undo it using history, but you know normally you can't take it back. Okay, so you want to make sure that that you're using it for a specific reason and there are some reasons where you would absolutely want to use merge layer so that's a another cool option that we have available to us with layers